Hey y'all, I'm Jules. Welcome back to another episode of Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. With me as always is the spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta. Happy New Year, Kelly. Happy New Year, Jules. Of course. Happy New Year. People who are listening to this are going to find out about this much later. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we just had New Year. We just had New Year's, but this is actually not coming out until like what? Uh, holy crap! Uh, Long time. <laughs> yeah. No, so we're gonna be like it's. It's just you guys are just gonna have to suck it up because we are. We are. It's. It's New Year's to us. So, um, welcome and uh, and and yeah, shit's going. It's going, man. Things are just like exploding over here in, in a good way. Things are going really well. So really. Yeah. Now the volcano's so, not exploding. No, thank God, no, no. Okay, okay, that w- that would be good. Out of town, and that's fun. And then you know, um, we just we just put out our quiz last week, and uh, the uh, am I ready or no? It's the what is my shadow work readiness score? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and if you guys haven't taken that yet, it is on the homepage of my website at kellysparta.com. It is really fucking awesome. And people are loving it. I say that because they are commenting that they are loving it. So, um, sweet. And yeah. And I'm getting all kinds of new clients coming in. It's like, you can feel the energy of the new year coming in. It's just like, it's fantastic. And we're on a new platform. We are. Then, oh my God, people can see us now. Hi. Yes. Hi. <laughs> Holy fuck. Yeah. Joey right? wanted to be on film, so he, he talked me out, out of doing this. But we're going to do it anyway. So if you're getting the audio podcast, you are getting the polished, uh, you know, edited version uh, where you don't hear all of the stuff that we talk about in the beginning or the opening, you know, bloody love, you know, whatever. Um, and if we flub up in the middle, you don't get that either. But if you come over to YouTube, you will get all the raw and unedited and i do be raw and unedited it's completely right up in there. and and that's how it's gonna fly so um you know you may want to skip well may not want to skip the first 10 seconds but <laughs> but this is how we fly so um so welcome to the new platform and the new us and you know my new haircut which you know we were just discussing but um, you, you'll, if you're on YouTube, you're going to notice that, that there's somebody sitting and staring at the screen that we haven't said anything to yet. And that's because, you know, we we're, we're rude, but <laughs> <laughs> we're so, doing things in order. We have to stay in order yeah, for yeah. some reason. So we're a little, I, I'm a little punchy today so that you guys better buckle, buckle up. It's going to be a fun ride. So, um, I got this really cool email from Camille before uh, like a few days ago it was like Mm -hmm. just before the new year and she's like oh my god i just found your podcast i love it i've been binging it and i just heard about the listener profile and if you ever need a listener profile and i was like you know what we haven't done one in forever i'm gonna bump whatever was next and you're on and she was like what what you mean like next week (laughs) i'm like yes and she's like crap okay (laughs) so i'm Kudos to you, Camille, for being courageous and being like, okay. <laughs> and welcome, welcome to, the- to the family. Well, it was more, I said tomorrow, and you said yes. <laughs> it was <more> <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. That's my bad. No, I was just like, I'll, it was when the spirit moved you. It was all good. <laughs> it was the things I had available, you know? Um, you know? I had guests after that, so I couldn't move them. And I was like, no, I want to see her now. Let's talk now. So clearly it was, ne- it was meant to be because you had the space. So um, so you're a new listener. Yes. And you found us because we were talking before we started recording. You, were, you said that um, you had been searching for stuff on mediumship. Yes. Um, I'm always searching. Um for my minute I'm in the car a lot or when I clean, um, I like a lot of development, like just stuff that I can be active. Like I'm walking around around the house, but I want to learn and, you know, get what I can. And so I do. Yeah. I found you guys to that. Relate to that. (laughs) Yeah. I can't sit. So. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very funny. We often get, Oh, we lost her for a minute there. 
She must have had a call come in on her iPad. <laughs> Am I back? Your your video isn't back, yeah, but you not. sound. Oh, I see. I see you. Yeah, I never went anywhere. I don't think so. Well, that's weird. I I. Nope, I say, oh, it's my bad. See, we've got a new platform and it just turned off one of your videos on me because it said my internet connection is bad. <laughs> this is when we were living in Panama. So my apologies. Okay. I don't know the I don't know the platform well enough yet. So this is our, our we're learning as we go. Yay. Um, so yeah, a lot of our, our people come in and they're just like <gasps> I love you. And they start binging and binging and binging and binging. And they're doing, you know, the 24 seven binge thing. And they'll come back and say, yeah, I've listened to a hundred episodes in four days. I'm like, Oh my God, did you sleep? <laughs> That's what I did. I was up till 2 a.m. Same thing. Last night. Oh so. my God. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it is what it is. So, but, but before you got here, Oh, there you are. You're back now. Um, my internet must have improved. But the, um, the, the question that I have for you is how did you end up on this path? What, what brought you here? Yeah. Um, so I was, uh, you know, I, I was debating, um, this and, but I am going to have to stick with being raw and real. Okay. Yes. And, um, I have shied away from telling people how long I've been doing it because um, I have gotten, I don't know if the right word is stigma, but um, like, so I've only been doing it about nine months, but the work okay. that I put in in nine months, I, my level has dramatically increased. Um, I mean, yeah. I was doing three to four circles a day, maybe, nope. and classes, and so I just... Circles by yourself, or circles with other people, uh, or... People. <clears throat> I just jumped... How did you get to circles with other people, three what, or four a day? How do you... Wait a minute, well, wait, what kind of circles are we doing? We doing fire Medium circles, ship. we doing... Okay. And I just jumped, Medium like, well, so, so, but I'm not gonna, like, I don't wanna, like, jump around too much, but, um... But so pretty much, I just felt like I've really, um, I get kind of, when I get into stuff, I get into stuff really <laughs> crazy, <laughs> like unhealthy, but it's fine. We're, we're healthy. <laughs> no, <laughs> but a little, ADHD. <laughs> a little unhealthy. No, but um, that's called an overachiever and that's our peeps. So, so that's I mean, I do. just wanted, yeah. I just want to like, so I just wanted to soak up as much as I can. And I guess I am impatient. So when you asked me to come on. I wanted to work with you immediately. So I was like, yeah, you know, because I can't wait either. So, um, you know, so. Impatient. Of course, <laughs> I love I'll it. just quit my life, you know. It's fine. But, um, no, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, so I actually, but I found, I've always been really drawn to the psychic mediums um, stuff, but I was somebody that believed that people had special powers, you know. <laughs> I mean, I just thought like, I just like, I'm average, you know, so, um, and it wasn't until it was May of this year, um, I was, uh, really, really, um, my life force was like gray. I just, like, I was drained. I was a shell and, um, and for me, that's very, very weird because I mean, I just, it was just, I said, I, okay, wait a minute. Yeah. According to, uh, oh, she just popped off of mine. Okay. Yes, we, oh, yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. We're just, we're still figuring out. Sorry. Tell, yeah, us, okay. tell us the story. My so I just, um, I was having a lot of issues in my marriage. Um, my husband is, um, he is borderline personality disorder, which is a form of narcissism. And I'm a pure empath who feels so sorry for, and I, you know, with trauma and I just, you know, um, and I'm also, I've realized I have issues, which is what made this a match, right? Um, and I received a reading from a medium who uh, literally felt, just kept saying, "Is um, you just don't have any 
self-love, like my whole foundation was just scrambled because of the gas lighting, the manipulation, the blame shifting. And I lost like all sense of like reality. It felt like, cause I, um, I just didn't trust my own reality anymore. And so I knew that I had to, um, to build my foundation. And so that's when I got into the mediumship because I was trying to grab onto something and I was raised Catholic, but I don't um, resonate with it. And so I was trying to find something to grab onto and I just grabbed onto, I just signed up for a class randomly. And then it just, I just got, it just accelerated. And that's kind of where we are. Okay. Yeah, you you are um, you are at a place that I see a lot of spiritual seekers go through, which is you hit awakening and you push your foot to the floor. Mm -hmm. and you're like, Express train, here I come, right? And and you know, so the, the good thing about that is that you make quick progress. The bad thing about that is that there's often destruction in its wake. Mm -hmm. um, now, I want to say that the destruction in its wake is um, going to happen no matter what. It just happens very quickly because you've got your fo foot to the floor. So, you know, it starts to look like, oh, I blew up my life. It's like, well, yeah, you blew up your life. You decided you wanted something else. And so everything that isn't something else had to go away. Yeah. Right. And that's how that flies. So, um, yeah, I, I'm assuming that you're experiencing that. Yeah, I am. Um, I'm like, I look around and I'm like, where is everybody? <laughs> like, but I don't want them. And, but then, you know, you're alone. So that, I think that's too right. why I probably do a lot of cir circles. It's my connection, I think, a little bit with people. Yeah. Well, and uh, the first thing I want to say to you there is that you will be alone for a little bit and then the new group of people who resonate with the new you will show up. So there's always a fallow period between when the old group goes away and when the new new group comes in. You should see that as a sign of progress, not a sign of depression. Okay. Uh, because um, it, it just means that you're up leveling and the new group hasn't yet arrived. I understand that. It makes sense. Yeah. I, I can I can attest to that. Yeah, I can attest to that. It's the same thing that happened to me. And I was like, I'm feeling all by myself over here. And, and then all of a sudden, it's the weirdest thing. You will, you know, if you get into crystals or whatever, like for me, it was crystals. All of a sudden, these all these crystal people come show up in my life. And all the, you know, my woo-woo friends show up, you know. And I was like, oh, my God, this is crazy. You know, so it's um, it's an opportunity to make new friends and you know like minds and, and be like a supportive group too yeah yeah because i i do and i'm i said i um i have been on this this um line of like is this healthy or not healthy you know and so i'm glad to hear you say like this is part of the process because i just but i just know like i just don't have need for the people and but then there's still like that other side, you know, it's like a weird spot to be in. Yeah. I, I, um, <clears throat> I've had moments in my life where I've looked back and I've said, wow, there's a lot of people who got left behind. Mm -hmm. And if I'm, if I have been in a, um, really negative state of mind, it's very easy to say, Oh, look, I suck. Oh, you know, all these people. And, I should have been able to stay friends and blah, blah, blah. But then, you know, <clears throat> when I'm in a good state of mind, I'm like, great. Yeah, I outgrew them. Life life goes on. They they didn't walk the same path I did. They went a different direction. You know, we, we parted ways, you know, whatever. But <clears throat> I, I wouldn't want to be friends with them today, per se, um, just because we're just in different places. Yeah. Right? So, <clears throat> you know. Sorry, I got a frog in my So do, do I have to do too. <laughs> we'll do it together. <laughs> we'll just hang yeah. it together. It'll be fun. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah. So, um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, the key is to not judge yourself around it. The yeah. key is to recognize that it is a natural part of the process. And 
you know, it, it's it's the same as when I was a kid and we would move from one duty station to the next when my mom was being transferred. And I would just pick up new friends and leave behind the old friends because, you know, I was a kid. And how did I, what did I know about keeping in touch with people, right? But it's like, you know, you move forward and it's, it's what's meant to be because that's where you are, right? You be where you are. Yeah. Yeah. And I so, think I needed so you know, badly to like move. Like I was stagnant yeah. and I just needed to move. And then it, like, I just felt that like it was necessary. Yeah. So um, how much of your life have you blown up? That's the question. Um, I actually said to someone today, I said, if um, if my mom took my kids for a week and said, Camille, do whatever you want. I go, I don't have one person to call. Not one. And so, I mean, I, I don't even know who I'd call. <laughs> Did you divorce your husband too? Um, yeah, we're, we're on that route. Um, he's in active addiction right now and um, mm. really bad. And so, um, and that's what's, that's why I'm not free completely. Cause I still feel, um, I don't know why it's that empath of me. I feel responsible for his life, but, um, but I'm separate. Like I haven't seen him in two months, but I'm still emotionally, he's emotionally like dependent on me. I feel like. So. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to tell you uh, a piece of advice from my husband who is in recovery for 15 years and is, has been part of the AA community for a long time. And he's, he, what he would say is you have to let them fall. If they cannot hit bottom, they will not bounce up. They may not make it through hitting bottom, mm -hmm. but if they don't hit bottom, they cannot bounce up. <clears throat> so, um, sadly, that is the case, and some people don't make it through, mm -hmm. but that is the generally accepted wisdom. Um, you can't save someone from themselves. And that's what we're fighting, yeah. You know, the best thing to do is let them be with themselves mm -hmm. until they can't be with themselves and they decide to change. Yeah, it's, it's um, yeah, I said I haven't seen him in two months, but I still answer the phone. I still, you know, and I, it's, it's, but um, that's really hard. It's just hard for that part. Yeah, it's tough. Um, there is, um, there are um, AA sort of programs for spouses. Mm -hmm. Um so you may want to, I don't know what addiction he's in, but, but there are 12 step programs for spouses Yeah, and that might be something to take a look at because that, that mm -hmm. gives you some very clear advice from people who are in it with you. I, and this is, and this is where a lot of my shadow work needed to come in is, um, this has brought up trauma for me. Um, my brother died from drugs and, um, I'm always like, how do I come full circle in life? I, was raised by a, nar a narcissist. I married one. My brother died from drugs. My husband's on what drug? I like, I don't know why I can't break this cycle my life is in. And that's what I was like, I need to do. So I needed to pivot. Yeah. But I'm still in the cycle somehow, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> so the, I'm betting that you have guilt around your brother's death. Mm -hmm. I have... I have guilt, but I was probably the hardest one on him, and I don't regret that. And I know that um, I, I was I was not an enabler, and so I don't have guilt around that. I just, but there is guilt around you know his loss, but so it's hard. Yeah. So it feels like what you've done is manifested an opportunity to do things differently. Um, and so, you know, there's that, that implies that there's guilt left over, mm -hmm. um, from the previous one. So <clears throat> I hope I'm changing. Like, well, if I Am I doing it differently? I hope mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So, you know, the, so <clears throat> unfortunately with this sort of stuff, the hardest problem is to, recognize that sometimes it's you or them that you know you can't go off the cliff with them 
you going off the cliff with them doesn't keep them from going off the cliff. Yeah. And one thing that, um, cause I actually also, my dad was alcoholic and, um, he's passed and, um, I had actually picked up the burden for all of that. You know, kids have an innate sense of, uh, being able to blame themselves for everything. And I had been carrying around that burden forever. Um, And so when I learned to let go of that burden, cut those ties so it didn't come back, literally it's a huge weight that was off my shoulders. And I actually did that with the help of um, a medium. Yeah. Um, And so I went for reading. Dad comes through and I'm like, okay, let's just have it out right now. Let's go. You know, I'm ready for, you know, Duke's up. Let's go. And he was like, I was completely wrong. I completely apologize. The man never, ever said that while he was alive. Um, and he was like, look, this is my burden. I was supposed to learn this life lesson. I screwed up my own life. I didn't because I was scared to death to have a family. That was his thing he was supposed to overcome. He was like, so I'll be repeating that in the future. So he said, but that's my burden. And he says, you need to let go of that. It's not yours to carry. It's mine. So he says, I'm taking it back. And that was ridiculously healing for me. Um, And it just, I mean, he and I are fine now. Like I talk to him and stuff and he comes and hangs out with me, you know, spiritually and everything. Um, And we're cool now. Um, But before that, I just despised the man. Was it? Because I never, I never forgave him. Kind of healed it. Yep. The it was him taking his responsibility and not blaming Tom, Dick and Harry about yeah. it. So, you know, and him realizing that those were my choices. I screwed you up. I screwed the family up because our family suffered because of his choices. Um, and now this is my life. So now I get to set the boundaries, create healthy boundaries or, you know, from myself and then be able to heal from that and move forward, you know? So I just wanted to offer that to you as far as just from my experience, that's what I can speak to. Yeah. And I do. And I, I, I resonate with that because I am, I keep, I keep feeling like what is hurting my, my heart the most is just never being um, like, when wrongs or mistakes are done, no, like they don't like, it's never acknowledged or apologized for. And so it's yeah. hard to just, it, I've been, I've been saying of like, it makes you feel like you don't matter because you don't even deserve an, an acknowledgement or an apology. And, and with my dad, he couldn't give what he didn't have. So he did not have the capacity while he was living to actually process what he's all done. It wasn't until literally he crossed over and he went, Oh man, really crap. And you know, um, and then he was able to process that. So he couldn't give me an apology and, uh, and do that. It it wasn't within him to do so because he just thought this is the way life was And this is what I was all told, you know, throughout the conversation, you know, um, he couldn't give what he didn't have. So, and I don't know your situation or anything like that. Maybe that's part of it. That's probably part of the healing and all. Yeah. Kelly, I don't think I can hear you. Kelly, I can't hear you, Kelly. What happened? That would be because I muted my mic so I could hack. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Hack, hack, hack. <clears throat> it's a hack <laughs> moment. And um, I'm going to say that um, th- it's great that Joel got, uh, so that, that you got a, an apology, you know, a pos- posthumous apology. Uh, but um, that almost never happens. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so one of the biggest challenges that I see with spiritual seekers is that they get really attached to that apology. I'm owed an apology. And it's like, well, if you're attached to it, you're always going to be in victim mode because there, the power is with the person who has to give the apology in your mind. And so you have no power in that scenario. Whereas if you 
acknowledge that they are humans who are limited and only have so much to offer. And <clears throat> they did the best they could with what they had. And it was insufficient, but it was the best they could with what they had. Then you have to look at not I'm owed an apology, but I'm angry. Mm -hmm. And if you can separate the anger from the person, then you can just let the anger out of your body and say, you know, I deserved better and I'm not dependent upon an apology and acknowledgement of that to deserve better, right? That way you're just saying, I deserved better and I should have gotten it and I I am never going to allow this in my life again to, to be this way, right? Um, then you take the power back in the scenario and you are not dependent upon the person giving you an apology that they are almost never going to give you. I mean, like, you hear... Yeah, I was surprised. Who gets I was not apology. expecting it. Yeah, and before or after death, one in a thousand, maybe more, gets an apology. So you should just not expect a freaking apology, mm -mm. right? There will be none forthcoming. You know, <clears throat> my dad never apologized to me. Um, and that's just how it is, yeah. right? So, you know, these are the things that happen. And it's okay. You know, you just, you have to get to the point where, um, and I can hear people going, it's not okay. <laughs> people are like, it's not okay. It's like, look, you can either sit in your anger and your upset, or you can take your power back and move on with your life and say, this is never coming. I'm going to accept that. I'm going to accept that. I'm never going to get the apology I want. I'm never going to get the parent that I wanted. I'm never going to get the, the nurturing that I wanted, that I deserved, the love that I wanted and deserved. I'm never going to get that from this person. So I can't fix the past. All I can do is fix the future. So <clears throat> let me make some changes in my life today. And I, I will make sure, mm -hmm. I will make sure that I get sufficient love. I will make sure that I get sufficient support. I will make sure that I nurture myself sufficiently. I will make sure that all of those things are handled and I will parent myself better than my parents parented me. Okay. Or, you know, then my parents didn't parent me and they required me to parent them in a lot of instances, right? You know, that's often the case. So but you're saying like the expectations is kind of what's holding people back a lot is the expectations um, of others. Yeah. Yeah. Well, demands. Yeah. It's not just expectations. It's demands. It's like you must apologize to me or I'm not having anything to do with you. And when you don't demand it or expect it, you life. release it pretty much. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Because yeah. then get you anywhere. Because then you're defining um, this is what I learned in Inner Peace 101. Just saying, um, part of, part of the program is we make our own definitions, and it's defining our lives how we want to define them, not trying to live my life by somebody else's definitions. Because why they don't get a vote? This is my life. Yeah, right. Makes sense. Um, so tell us a little bit more about your journey. Tell us. Yeah. Tell us yeah. what. So you you came to this. What was the trigger that brought you in? Brought me to to you or in to spirituality. Spirituality. Uh, the trigger. Um, the trigger was um, in when I signed up for that first course. So what really made me dive more into it was the leader of the the course. She read me and she just was speaking more to my guides. I think in in that course. Like she was more guides, angels, that kind of, and, um, she was just literally saying that, um, the way I viewed myself is what keeps attracting a lot of this to me. And I, and if I really wanted to break this cycle, I could leave my husband and I will probably attract the same thing in another form. And right. so basically saying this cause I am I'm a match, you know, pretty much. Right. And, um, just she, I mean, she really gave me the hard truth, but I always, I always need things that way. Like I don't take it seriously till somebody kicks me is how I feel, you know? So, um, but she said that I, I just, um, 
she said what was funny is my guy said I had to do mirror, mirror work. And she, at first, she was channeling it. And she was like, you know, three times. And then she goes, wait, they're saying to do it 10 times a day for three weeks. She goes, she, she goes I've never told anyone to do that much mirror work. Like, and I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, uh, you know, awkward. <laughs> okay wait 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 the awkward moment is not her channeling or that's the spirit guides the awkward moment is oh by the way do this three times a day for three weeks that see that's what i love about the woo woo world that's the awkward moment Which, but then, no, but she, yeah but she's like like i never gave someone that much that's so funny so i was like i'm that i'm that um empty of Oops. self-love i don't know <laughs> Yeah. Wait. So, <laughs> so you know, all right. So you you had a you know hardcore kick ass reading mm-hmm. is really what what got you. Yeah. There. What brought you to the reading? So it was I don't know how I found her course. I think I was just really upset after a terrible fight, and I literally felt like he was sucking the love of life out of me. Like I had no life force, and I was googling. Um, I was. Okay, actually, I remember what started now. Netflix came out with the Gwyneth Paltrow, the Goop show, and there was one yes. episode about was it the mediums? Was it mediums? She had like the circle, the healing, and I was like, I need this. Like you know, I just need this. I need to do this. I just and I was so I started googling, googling. Um, sadly, there's not really a lot in Pittsburgh, like in person. I really couldn't find anything. Um, and then of course my, um, now, now, now the class had a class how to start like tomorrow. So, um, so <laughs> that limited the, um, the, my choices. And so I just grabbed this class and, and what really changed me though was in that reading and I didn't tell her any of this, but this is what really changed my life is she said, he has a soul contract. He is never going to change. And she repeated that three times. And she goes, you keep, I, cause I was hanging on to there's hope, there's hope, there's hope, there's hope. And she said, he's never going to change. And she brought in my brother and he said, he's never going to change. Like, and I just, she kept saying it and saying it. And I was like, he's never going to change. Like, you know, I have to get out now before it takes me with it. Like, and that, mm-hmm. that reading, I, I just, I don't even under, think she understands that it, it made me move. Yeah. Awesome. So, and so you've been on the express train awesome. ride for the next, for the last nine months. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> to tell, tell our listeners what an express train ride feels like. I've been doing past <laughs> lives. I've been doing um, root cause therapy. I've been doing Akashic. I've been doing... <laughs> I've been doing lucid dreaming. I I dabbled in um, astral projection. I <laughs> this is embarrassing to say it out loud. <laughs> no, our audience loves this. Trust and me. Do it. You know. And and you're gonna yeah, and you're gonna say something. I'm gonna go whoa whoa whoa. What is that? So yeah, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> what, else, what else have I done? Okay, I've done. I mean, obviously, like my main focus though is evidential mediumship. I mean, I believe. The evidence that she gave me is what made me change. If I got a reading with not that evidence that she gave me, I wouldn't have pivoted. And so I am really, really taking serious. Um, Did she freeze up for you? Whoops, I think I lost the connection. Come on back, Camille. (laughs) <clears throat> Come on back to us. She's probably talking. So when we edit it together, it'll probably be all one thing. So <laughs> we should probably shut up because she's talking. Or maybe not. Do, 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 do. 
No worries, YouTube. Y'all eat some popcorn. We'll be right back. It's just keep watching. You get to see all the backstage <laughs> stuff. It's all good. Just hit the, the go forward 10 just, second button. Just go forward. Oh, yep, because she just She'll popped off. Yeah. <laughs> She'll be back. Yeah. But wait, the, there's more. Fun of unedited. <laughs> right? Okay, so mediumship, <laughs> she's talking to dead people. Is this what this is? Oh, yeah. Yeah, mediumship. Because I'm like, what? Dead people. Okay, what is the evidence? evidential mediumship thing she was talking about so <laughs> is that evidential a mediumship means that you are giving evidence to prove that you are actually in contact with the person that you say you're in contact with so it's it's saying things that only that person would say only that person giving, knows giving you know hard information that they would know that you couldn't look up or something like that right okay um, so okay giving their name instead of just sort of this general sense of your dad or your mom or whatever like there's a male energy that crossed over yeah pick one okay yeah, so evidential mediumship is focused on giving hard information to the people that are receiving the readings so that they can know for certain that you are talking to the right person okay yeah and is that how does that work with, and I guess it's different for everybody. Um, like if somebody was interested in doing that, is there, are, are there classes that say, this is how you develop this. Yes. And this is how you start talking to dead people. One Oh one. Yes. You know? Okay. Yeah. So that's you know, neat. Yeah. So evidential mediumship is just simply demanding more <clears throat> information from the person. than regular Yeah. Medium. I always thought it would be the coolest job ever because I've seen them on TV and this would be like, oh, if I could do that, this would be me. So I want to go to like the crime scene mm -hmm. and like figure out what happened and have like the pissed off ghost who just got murdered. Tell me like, no, Jojo is the one that killed me and this is what happened and da, 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 da. And like, I know nothing. I just thought that's just the coolest thing when I've seen them and they bring in mediums. And they go, well, here's what happened, blah, 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 blah. Well, this would be the moment when I tell you that when you do that, you get to see a lot of really maimed, nasty looking people. Yeah. So or, the find, or the find the lost the child. Moments, yeah. Moments yeah, that'd be. Find the lost child also gives you, um, you know, sometimes dead children. So. so ah. Here she, she's oh, wait, here she is. Yeah. I'm stealing but still, that would be so cool. Yeah, I, I just have to, that. I'd have to get over the gory stuff and not puke while I'm giving the people the reading. <laughs> okay. Sorry, so, guys. I'm going to ask you to turn your volume down off. a little bit because uh, we are getting yes. feedback from your, your, uh, your uh, speakers are feeding back into your microphone. So they are. Yeah. Okay. So, um, what? just a wee. So just turn Why your volume down a little bit on okay. your speakers. Sure. And that'll be fine. So you were saying we, we got off on a topic of, you know, what is evidential mediumship and we yes. went down that rabbit hole while we, while we were waiting for you to come back. So, so, uh, evidential mediumship, I now. love it. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, you were saying before you, you froze and, mm -hmm. and went south, um, uh, you were saying that you were doing that. What else, what else did you get into? Um, I'm trying to pinpoint it all. Um, So I think then like the shadow work is something that the shadow work in past lives is something that keeps coming up for me and it's feeling like intuition or it's like, bring, it's a keeps things keep, keep being brought to me about this. Um, obviously I keep asking to like for help to heal because I solely, I mean, I solely entered mediumship to heal. Um, and there's just this layer that like, I'm not getting to the deep nitty gritty and yeah. Well, who are you talking to, to heal in mediumship? What, what are you trying to do? I've never heard the words mediumship and healing put together before. So really, tell me, and tell me how you're using that. Yeah. I feel, and this is like, definitely like, like, uh, I think my, I will say a mistake I made was I had a lot of my hands in a lot of pots, <laughs> a lot of okay. teachers with those pots. And so I have, now that I'm further down the line, I am just taking what feels correct to me. And mm -hmm. I will say with the mediumship is I can't be a good channel if I have all this shit. 
yes, right? Absolutely. Because then my yes. shit comes out on your shit. Right. <laughs> so. yeah. Yay, I it's project a bunch all my crap all over you. So. Yes. yes. Yes, that's exactly what happens. And so I've so been... how are you uh, using medium shift to heal, though? How are you doing that? Um, so I guess that's... That's um, interesting because I have, in, in my experience, this is like crazy. Um, in these circles, people I don't know, I'm often paired with people who I can resonate and relate to and the messages I can take for myself. That happens all the time. But <laughs> the one, I have to say this one story because I just, I, it blew, I cried hysterically on Zoom in front of 20 people because it blew me away. I, um, there was an altercation with my husband, like physical, physical. I called the police. They took him away and I was late from my circle. So I hopped on after I just was in the cops in my home. He's gone. I hop on circle because to me, like that's where I feel better. I hate saying that. Right. And I'm the teacher. He let me chill for a minute, but then it was my turn and I connected and I held back a lot of the evidence I was given because I thought it was mine. I thought it was my crap that th I'm too fresh. I'm too, I was still shaking from like trauma. And right. when I, when I was giving, this guy was giving his feedback and the te the te 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 teacher stopped, stopped him and said, um, cause I felt like he knew what I got. It's, like, it's almost like he seemed like he knew what I got and I didn't say it. Yeah. Right. The, this brother, this guy lost a sister who from domestic violence and I didn't say mm -hmm. that biggest piece because I thought it was mine right. and I just started sobbing because I was like, I thought that was me. I thought it was me and it's just like, it just always blows me away how like spirit connects me with people who I can, can help both of us. It almost seems like in a way and it just yeah. blows me away. And absolutely. Yes, it does that constantly. I, I did a series of readings, uh, you know, three days ago for a, a New Year's party uh, fundraiser for the Rotary Club here. And I did a reading for somebody. And one section of that reading, I had a call the next day with a friend of mine. We exchange readings for each other once a month. Um, and she, she said the exact same thing to me that I said to that woman in the reading. It was the exact same thing. And I was like, that's validation, <laughs> right? That's validation. <laughs> yeah, it happens all the time, all the time. So you are not wrong there. It is not your imagination. So it that's why that healing to me, it's, yes. it's not as strong as me going inward myself. Like it's not as, right. but it's definitely there. Yeah. Do you know where your Pluto is in your chart? Your astrological so chart. I am actually not too familiar with like um, the astrology. Like I know I'm an Aries, you know. Um, okay. but <laughs> I'm just curious because you know it, that's a seeing yourself in reflection, and so I'm, Pluto's in my twelfth house. It's it's one of the very few things I know about astrology. <laughs> I know that because Pluto is in my 12th house, I do my, my work in reflection, right? A lot of it is, is from what I see reflected outside of me, and I, I bring it back to me. Um, and that was what it was sounding like. So I was curious if your Pluto was in I'll have to let you know. I'll, I'll, I'll email yeah. you after if, if it is. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. So, well, this has been great. We've, we've gone way over time. Okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Well, I just wanted it's to all say good. one more thing. Why are you apologizing? Like, you were is, too interesting. This is why I want to say one more thing because it's about your podcast is why I'm like binging it is um, <clears throat> the protection that you talk about. Um, mm -hmm. I've never, I never protected myself and I'm doing four circles a day. Oh my God. And I do hair. I'm touching people. I mean, I'm like, picture the gunk I got, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. It's frightening, isn't it? Um, yeah. I, again, I was, I think I, I, I don't want to call it naive. Maybe my top, my top, my toxic trait is I'm an avoider. Um, <laughs> so I just act like it's not Okay. There. I'm going to rephrase that for you. Mm -hmm. It's not your toxic trait. It's your primary resistance. That's good. Okay. 
It's one of the resistance patterns that we talk about in inner peace is avoidance. It's one of the most common resistances on the mind. Mine's so bad. It's a hundred percent. Yeah. Well, and that's okay. I mean, you just need to know that that's what's true and then just overcome it. Right. Because, you know, it's, it's a really common one. So, and the answer to it is just do it anyway. You know, that's the only way to fix an avoidance one is just do it anyway. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a Nike moment. Right. So, um, yeah, it, it, so the, you brought us back to something in my brain just lost. The protection. <laughs> the protection, protections. Yeah, you definitely needs a fucking protection. Let's just say that, right? So, um, yeah, when you've got all of this stuff going on, and this is one of the things, and I, I will tell you guys that when I jumped on the express train, I didn't have my protections up either. Um, and I, and I didn't even know how to hold my boundaries in a, as an empath. And I didn't know a lot of things. And, you know, this is one of the reasons why I blow up, blew up so often, you know, that, uh, because I wasn't aware of what was going on for me, much less for, I knew what was going on for everybody else, but I had no idea how it was impacting myself. Yeah. You know, right? Um, yeah. And so, you know, I monitor everybody else mm-hmm. and be like, oh, you guys are all on blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly I'm sitting there on the floor because I blew up or I fell over or I burned out or, you know, whatever. Um, <clears throat> and so taking care of yourself is your number one priority. You can't take care of anybody else until you take care of yourself. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad you brought this up because it is huge right it's huge so um yeah we'll talk about this after the call yeah (laughs) after the podcast um and um but you know we can't do what we don't know to do right i didn't know to put up a shield i didn't know to put up to to change my boundaries i didn't know i just wish that would be like the 101s with medium like it just depends on who your your teacher is and and whether or not they were ever taught. Yeah. And that's part of the problem, right? Mm-hmm. I've been studying this stuff for 48 years now. That's a long time. And I finally feel like I have a clue. Right? <laughs> 48 years and I finally feel like I have a clue. You know, it, it took that long. So, you know, the, the thing that you have to recognize is that your teachers are doing the best that they can with the information that they received and they had just as little idea of what a curriculum would be as you do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with all of the randomness that's out there right now, it's really hard to know what's right and what isn't right. And there's a huge amount of misinformation out there, which I think is even worse than it was. It it is absolutely worse than it was when I was growing up because I didn't have misinformation. I just had a lack of information in a lot of, that's why I've been searching for it. And I resonated. I felt, I trust my, my gut. And Mm -hmm. I, cause there's Mm -hmm. so much misinformation, even podcasts and I'm searching, I'm searching. And that's why when I say I binged it, I was binging all of these clearings and I called Karen, I called Karen already. Like, you know, from ghost be gone. I'm like, I'm on it. Okay. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, you are. (laughs) called Karen Baskin. Yeah, I already yeah. called her. Oh my God. I'm like, help. <laughs> She's awesome. You're going to love Listen, her. I'm not, so. I'm not messing around. <laughs> yeah, you're not. You, you are on it. You're in it to win it, baby. So, yeah. So, you know, you're doing everything right. You're, you're you know, the only challenge that you're having right now is that you're judging yourself for it. So my, my strong encouragement to you would be to just say, fuck it. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to do what the hell I want to do. And I'm going to not worry about it. And I'm not going to listen to people who judge me for it, including myself. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's really the ego. best you can do in this moment. Right. Um, and just keep moving forward because uh, eventually we get where we need to go. And you are always exactly where you are meant to be in the moment. So, you know, be okay with that. Don't, don't be going, oh, I should have been there faster. I, I mm-hmm. you know, you're relatively young. What, how old are you? 30. 30. Oh, yeah. You're a baby. So, um, but you know, I get, I get women in here who are in their sixties and seventies who are like, Oh, I wish I'd started sooner. And then I get people in their thirties going, Oh, I wish I'd started sooner. And I'm like, you know, it, it, it's all relative, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, just 
the key is not to wish you had started sooner. The key is to be where you are because you'll get there faster than, than distracting yourself with wishing you had started sooner. Makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you so much for coming on the show. I absolutely you've given us such a wealth of, of stuff to talk about. This has been a great episode. Thank you. I'm so thrilled. Thank you. Um, that's why we went so long is because there's been so much to talk about. And I'm always awesome. late. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. it's all good. That. They didn't know that until you said that. So. Yeah, shh. And you weren't as late as you were because I didn't let you in because I didn't know there was a lobby. So, you know, shit okay, happens, good. man. We're on our first run. It's a new year. We'll figure it out as we go, right? All right. So, uh, if you guys have been listening to this and you're going, whoa, I feel like I'm where Camille is <laughs> and I'm, I'm on the express train and I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, the first thing I would say is don't ground, don't ground, don't ground. Because you, when you're on the express train, grounding is like trying to stick a pole through the bottom of a, a freight train running out of control. You're going to get hurt. Center, do not ground. You want to center into the center of your being so that you can stay liquid right if you're a SWAT person I love SWAT he's so uh, he, he's so yummy um and more more oh my god I've got such a thing for tomorrow more anyway the, the he's a the, cutie um, there's there's you need to be able to stay liquid you need to be able to stay moving and 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 in your center and that's that's the best way to do it when you're moving this fast is stay centered okay mm -hmm. and then the next thing I'm gonna say is if you want an accelerated path that doesn't have to be wildly out of control and, and insanely, you know, w random, um, <laughs> you know, come see me that I am the express train girl. This is what I do. I, I take people through processes much faster than you normally get in your day to day life. And I do it in a way that is easeful and not traumatizing. So, um, and not blowy uppy selfie. And not blowy uppy <laughs> selfie. <yes. laughs> So set up a discovery call. There'll be a link in the show notes. We'd love to talk to you and uh, find, figure out where you are in your process and get you started uh, on that express train in a way that is more uh, structured and uh, sane. Seatbelt. Uh, yeah. And, and mm, some seatbelts, yeah. Some. Very few, actually. <laughs> Very few. A few seatbelts, not all the seatbelts. But yeah, there we go. And so that's it for this week, right? Yeah. So, well, uh, you have a Kellyism, uh, a Kellyism for the beginning of the year. Ground. No, don't ground. Center. Don't ground. Center. Yeah. When on center. The train, don't ground. Center. Yes. Center and whoop, whoop, we're moving forward. <laughs> All right. Well, tune in next time, folks. <laughs> when Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Jules here with Kelly Sparta and Camille O'Malley. Thank you. And you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. Bye, guys. So long. Bye. How do I hit stop?